you know, with all the variations that happen with martinis nowadays, uh, one that's very popular and kind of goes with the whole wannabe manly Mad Men James Bond thing is the Vesper Martini. Um, for a while, that involved vodka gin and uh, something called Kina Lele. Unfortunately, Kina Lele got discontinued. You can't get your hands on it anymore. But this wonderful company started making this. And I'm going to imagine that they were trying to make Kina Lele. It is a quinine aperitif. Uh, quinine is... Uh, made from a tree bark. It's the sort of defining ingredient in a tonic water. Um, it's the part that kind of grabs the back of your palate when you sip on like a vodka tonic or something. It dries out the palate at the end. Uh, and this is a really nice, a very interesting um, aperitif wine here. So very much like vermouth, needs to be refrigerated after it's opened. Uh, it's going to have a lot of those same sort of properties with uh, lemony and herbaceousness. Uh, but I find that this is really unique in that it's, it's pretty viscous, but it gives you a perceived sweetness on the front and immediately afterwards, clean palate, just dry. It's the most bizarre thing. I highly recommend just trying some of it on its own. Uh, so the classic portions, uh, like I said, are three measures of gin to one measure of vodka and a half measure of whatever your aperitif is going to be. So generally, I uh, just go for two and a quarter ounce of the uh, gin. And you're using the green alls for this one? And I am using the green alls. Uh, it is my personal preference right now. I was keeping a small bottle at home and the store was out of them, so I wound up with this mammoth. <laughs> uh, I will be happy to sip through that though over the course of time. I do think most people think of Lille Blanc as being what was referenced in the movie, and, well, and that's not the case? Is yes, it? Lille Blanc, uh, well, Lille in general, they make uh, several different kinds. So they have the Blanc, they used to have the Kina, they have the Rouge, they have the uh, Rosé actually as well. Uh, the Lille Blanc is fine, but it's sweeter. It's a lot more yeah, it's mellowed not, out. I mean, if you taste it's like this, it's, it's, clear, yeah, it's, it's clearly very nothing, nothing at all wine. like this. Um, so the, this Lule actually used to make the quinine. That was the Kina Lule. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah, Kina yeah. Lule. It's like somebody uh -huh. calling for new Coke. It just doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you only have Lule Blanc, you can only find that. A lot of times you can add bitters to kind of get that flavor or something like mm -hmm. that, but it's not going to be the same. A lot of people <laughs> will use the, the Lule Blanc with a dash of Angostura bitters. I mean... But you're, you're not getting the quinine. You're the, you just get the drier. Yeah. Well, right, yeah. I mean, it, you're just giving it a, some depth, you know. Um, I'm not saying it's a poor substitute, that's fine, but I mean obviously, you know, Lille Blanc is, like you said, much more readily available, so generally that's what you'll be able to find. If someone's carrying this, uh, shake their hand and buy a bottle. So, <laughs> um, so I'm going to use two and a quarter ounce of the gin, I'm going to go one, uh, or I'm sorry, three quarter ounce vodka, and I'm, because I like this a little too much, I'll lean towards the half an ounce of, uh, of the Kina here. And so, since I have justified in my own mind why they were shaking martinis back then with these fine ingredients that we have today, I feel it is appropriate to stir this drink. <laughs> I am an advocate for stirring your All Spirits cocktails, and I would like to keep rules intact with the least number of exceptions possible. Plus, until someone pays us to do otherwise, we're going to do whatever we want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Fair Which enough. is also kind of an invitation. <laughs> Eli loves invitations. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Especially from strange businessmen with lots of money. <laughs> that makes two of us. <laughs> All right. Stir that bad boy in. Using a combination of strainers. Now, normally I would do this because it would be shaken, but I still find that it's a very effective way of, uh, <laughs> of keeping the ice chips out of your drink. I've got a Hawthorne strainer and a fine metal sieve here. Uh, if you want this nice, clear drink, it's a great way to go. And I want to take a little sip of that before you put your garnish. 
<laughs> also, uh, I am a minimalist, and I'll call it a purist. I'm kind of an elitist bastard sometimes, I guess, but uh, I like to get the oils off of your rind, give it a nice dab around the edge, but I don't like to drop the rind into the drink. I feel like because you're trying to get the essence of the rind, you want the oils and things. I read it in a book, it's probably a $5 bargain bin a long time ago, but they said it kind of bombs the drink with the lemon all of a sudden. You know, I want to be able to taste all these other things. Lemon obviously is very powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you put that in there, you kind of risk getting a little more than you bargained for. So. <laughs> All right. A James Bond Vesper Martini. Fantastic. Yeah. One of my favorites, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent.